in the midst of all the nonsense, we somehow have to give you enough information here that can benefit your life. And there's very few people that can legitimately benefit your life, like Rebecca Fife. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Fife, Landmark Pest Management. What's the number there for people? And I know you're plenty busy, but give it out anyway. We can be reached at 773-614-PEST. That's 773-614-PEST. What is PEST? What are the numbers? P- uh, 7378, 7378. You sure you want me to spell Perfect. check? 737, okay. <laughs> 614-7378. All right, what is a lantern fly? A lanternfly is a beautiful leaf hopper native to Asia. And if it stayed there, that would be much better for the United States because they're here now. They probably came from Asia on nursery stock because they lay these little patches of eggs and the eggs hibernate so they can travel in a shipping container across the ocean and come here. And in Pennsylvania, alone, uh, the spotted lantern fly is estimated to cause $324 million in crop damage annually. And in vineyards that it infests, it reduces the grape yield by 80 to 90 percent. And the worst part of this is it just showed up in Chicago. Oh, so what is it? What does it do? Like, you know, we don't want it around for the reasons you described, but what sort of damage does it do, you know, here in town? Sure. So it has piercing sucking mouth parts and it pierces into plants (laughs) and it sucks the phloem, which is essentially the lifeblood of the plant. But that's not the worst thing it does. The injury that it makes to the plant opens the plant up to pathogens. But worst yet, while the lanternfly is feeding, it exudes a sugary substance from its backside, which is called honeydew. And this honeydew is a perfect substrate to grow sooty mildew, which basically blacks out the plant and doesn't allow it to photosynthesize, killing the plant. The worst part is the if, if you took a lanternfly out on a date, she would order the lobster, the filet mignon, and the yeah. bottle of Cristal. Yeah. Lanternflies are not a cheap date. They no. the, the trees that they go after are our vineyard stock, our oh. orchard trees. So they're going after the most expensive, slow-growing agricultural products. Uh, oh. Nick, you look like you had a follow-up. Well, so in that essence, then, like things like oak trees, or if we have any ash trees left after the emerald ash borer, those aren't at risk then, right? They're not at risk. It's more our agricultural products. But there's one more tree that um, spotted lanternflies have a really interesting relationship with. It's called the Tree of Heaven. And it's kind of a weed. We brought it into the United States because it's beautiful for ornamental reasons. And it can get up to 15 feet tall. So it looks like a tree, but it's pretty much a weed. And so we don't really care if the spotted lanternfly eats Tree of Heaven because Tree of Heaven isn't ecologically important for us. But the problem is Tree of Heaven has an alkaloid that is bitter and uh, the spotted lanternfly consumes tree of heaven to take in that alkaloid to make it bitter and toxic to birds. So the birds Mm. that eat a lot of bugs for us can't eat the spotted lanternfly. And that's why it's able to um, grow, you know, and breed so much in an ecosystem because it doesn't have natural predators because it fills itself with this bitter alkaloid. So it, it, you know, it's, it's unchecked. Mm. All right, so we need to get rid of them. Um, Tiny shotguns? What do we do? How do we get rid of them? (laughs) Yes, tiny shotguns. Or, alternatively, if you see a spotter and lantern fly, take a photo of it because the Department of Agriculture is tracking it. Once you've snapped the the photo, squish that bugger, and then you're going to want to send an email with that photo to lanternfly at illinois.edu, lanternfly at illinois.edu, or you can call the Illinois Department of Agriculture, and they want you to go one step further. That little patch of eggs that we talked about, they want you to look for that. And if you see that little patch of eggs, you can kill it by scraping it off. But if you just scrape it off on a stick, it's still going to be alive. So they want you to then apply hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol to it. 
uh, so that those eggs are killed, so that we can all do our part to help protect orchard stock, protect vineyards, and and help to you know slow the growth of the lantern. So fly the bold point is here: stop the infestation. Yeah. So there you go. There's exactly. your lantern fly lesson mm-hmm. of the day. All right, uh, Rebecca, you taking general questions here? Absolutely. Let's go live to Andrea. Who's pesting you? Oh, spiders. I'm seeing so many spiders in the house, around the house. Is this the time of year? And just will a regular exterminator get rid of my spiders? Yes, it's the time of year. They're cold and they are ready to, um, they basically hibernate for the winter. So when spiders stay outside for the winter, their blood uh, becomes almost an antifreeze and they stop being active generally when the bugs that they hunt for the year um, aren't crawling and flying anymore. There's not much to eat, so they sort of transform their blood to antifreeze. They go in a crack or crevice, they hang out, they survive the winter outdoors. However, a portion of them decide that it's a much, much nicer dig inside your home, so they come indoors uh, when they feel that first nip of cold. So people are you know, very uh, alerted to the presence of increasing spiders, especially we've gotten calls over the past couple of days for some larger spiders in people's Whoa. homes. And when the people text us photos, they're all harmless fi- spiders because there are really no medically significant spiders found in the Chicago region in any quantity. So if you have spiders in your home, it's unsightly, it's inconvenient, but it's not an emergency. So okay, there's kind good. of two paths you can take. Yeah, exactly. So if, you, if you'd like to try it yourself, you can vacuum up any spiders you see. You can destroy their webs with routine cleaning, and you can keep your home, especially the lower level, garage, storage closets, basements, spider-free with your routine cleaning. You'll still have a couple of them, but just cutting down on the number of them that successfully breed by by vacuuming them up and, you know, clearing away their webs and any egg sacs that they have with the vacuum is a really great way to make a very significant reduction. If that's not good enough for you, you can have a repellent barrier treatment applied to the foundation of your home, focusing on cracks and crevices that spiders might come through. And if that's still not good enough, you can have a treatment put in, you know, along the baseboards and um, in corners of closets and things, spider prone areas inside the home. So there's that continuum where you can start with a pesticide free solution um, that doesn't cost you anything that you can do yourself by removing them with a vacuum. And as that's not good enough, you can engage professionals and escalate. And that's what we call an integrated pest management model, where you start with the most conservative approach first, see if it's good enough for you, if it meets your satisfaction, your level of spider freeness that you desire, and then, you know, very thoughtfully escalate if you if you need anything additional. Awesome. Um, Thank you. That's great information. All right. Uh, one more quickly from a listener. Um, I've seen a couple of bugs I didn't expect. I leave the door open occasionally when I'm bringing in groceries, things of that nature. Is it normal to see bugs scurrying inside this time of year, or do I have a bigger problem? So I think it depends on the kind of bug. There are some insects like roly-polies, millipedes, and we had record numbers of those inside of people's homes this year. The reason is the the um, abundance of rain. So they need to escape to higher ground when there's a lot of moisture outside or the extreme heat also sends them into people's homes. So if you had more roly-polies and more millipedes coming in this year, they were escaping a lot of rain and extreme heat. So What do you do with them? R- random C4? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mini C4s. I'm, I'm always, the vacuum's always my go-to. There you yeah, go. I was told somebody yeah. had an insect vacuum. And I said, well, how many insects do you have? Hire an exterminator. They go, no, if you see them occasionally, it's just a quick and efficient way to take care of the problem. Mm-hmm. I didn't even thought about it. Like, like a, a little, little, little insect hand vacuum yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But there are other insects that you, you know, definitely don't want indoors in huge numbers. Like people get infestations of an insect called springtails and you get them by the thousands and they're, they can be really a nuisance. That's no good. You don't want that. And again, uh, you do need to take significant action and quick action. You cannot stop them by using your words, Andrea. I know no, you are. I know you're a peaceable person. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, you're great as always. Seven seven three seven seven three six one four seven three seven eight seven seven three six one four. Pass. What's the website? Landmarkpest.com. You can reach us at landmarkpest.com. And if you need any bugs ID'd, go ahead and send us clear photos, and we will ID them for you and give you advice at no charge. There you go. You're a good person, and she does a bunch of stuff Thank in you. schools too. So thanks for being on. 